How's it going? This is James from James Films, and I've been making a lot of really fun animations recently with quite a few of my still renders. I've been kind of turning them into these dreamy scenes where you're kind of moving through. The plants are animated. There's kind of this light breeze moving through. And the way I've achieved this effect is by using a couple different asset libraries. And one in particular that just released a massive update is the Polygon IQ Botanique Library. It's an incredible resource, has a ton of different trees from tropical ones like you see here. And this is all in Blender too. It works pretty well in the viewport, you can see as you kind of look at stuff. They've got forest assets, stuff to actually even scatter on the forest floor, like ferns and plants and roots and rocks and stuff like that. It's all super easy. And like I said, they just released this amazing new animation library where everything is just pretty much just a couple clicks away to get really, really cool results. Fully customizable, you can even loop stuff out too kind of give it a more natural feel so all the trees aren't kind of moving the same way. You can kind of add some subtle randomization to it. So it's been a lot of fun to play around with this. And so going forward on my channel, I wanted to break down a couple of these asset libraries that I use pretty much on a daily basis for a lot of my projects to really speed up my workflow. And as I always say, you can do a lot of this yourself, model the assets and stuff from scratch, but really a lot of these companies have done so much of the heavy lifting for you. and. It does cost a little bit of money here, but there are different levels that you can kind of pay into uh, based on what you want. But what's really amazing is what you're seeing here, just the incredible amount of customizability you have for each one of these, really down to like the branch or the individual leaf level. You can kind of customize the direction out of the wind, the speed, and really just make it look realistic. And just to get to this result, it's so quick and easy. So I wanted to fire up Blender and just kind of walk through some of the new features of uh, the Polygon IQ Botanique library. So I'm just gonna remove the default cube for now. And this is now over on here. So I have the Botanique full uh, library here. There's a couple other different versions that have a variety of different assets. Some have kind of like a, you know, maybe 10% or 15% of the full assets. So if you don't wanna spend for the full one, there are some smaller ones to kind of get a little bit of a preview. There's even, a, I believe, a free version too to kind of play around with as well. So what you do to first bring in these assets is to click on this little spawn asset library here. And it'll bring up a drop down and you can actually sort by seasons too. So if I just wanted spring ones, I could uncheck these boxes and it'll just show me assets that would be for spring. Similarly, if I just wanted winter ones, I can uncheck that. There's none for shrubs specifically, but if I was to go to coniferous, you can see there's a whole bunch that have just snow all over them. It looks really, really cool. So I'm just gonna uncheck these and just check them all on again here. And I found myself recently using quite a few of their tropical assets for my scenes. And what you do is it's simple as you know, clicking on this drop down and, and choosing which asset you want. Let's go with this kind of simple palm tree here. I'm gonna have it make editable here. And then I just click okay and it just spawns it here at my origin. And so this is you know already pretty much ready to render if you just wanted to put this in your scene. But if you're making an animation, if you scroll down a little bit here, you actually have this little section here that is allowing you to add animation. You can see it adds wind animation to these selected animable assets, applies only on objects that are editable. So you have to make sure it's editable when you import it in. You can't just import it as a uh, collection. You have to have that checked in as editable. And so once you go down here, you can click on add animation and you have a couple different selections for this dropdown. You can do wind best fit, which I've found myself using primarily, or you can do wind palm for the specific one, or you know, if you're putting in grass or, or short you know, shrubs and things like that, you can do the wind low vegetation. Uh, and there's a wind simple too. So I'm just gonna go with wind best fit for now and hit okay. And so now this has actually brought in an animation. If I pull up a timeline and click on it, you can see it now playing in my viewport here. And you can edit all of these in real time pretty much. So if I wanted to make it like a storm, I can click that and hit set on selected objects. And now you see it's getting a little bit windier. If I was to crank up the strength, let's really ramp this up like crazy and hit set. You can really see it starts to kind of break down a little bit if you go past a certain point. So I wouldn't recommend going much above one, but you see that's really starting to shear quite a bit there. And what's also neat too, is you can choose how far out you wanna loop things too. So you can loop frames on their site. It says anything longer than 80 frames is loopable. So you can you know, adjust this frame right here and kind of have it loop based on what you want for your scene. I'm gonna put this back to just the light breeze for now here. And what's cool too, is you can also do some additional modifications here. So you can kind of change you know, how these things are displaced a bit and it's all fully procedural. So it works really, really nicely and is again, super easy to update kind of in real time here. You can even actually bake these out to Alembics, which if you're bringing this over into Unreal Engine or Unity or some other software, it makes it super easy to kind of bottle up all the animations into an uh, Alembic file for you to actually export out to additional software. And I've actually been doing a lot more work in Unreal Engine recently. So having this feature has been really helpful because uh, it just allows me to bring over some really high quality assets from Blender 
uh, to create my scenes. What's also cool about this too, if I was to switch over to a rendered mode here, let's just switch over quickly here into cycles and let me just add in like a sky texture here so we can actually see what we're looking at. Uh, if I go to here, sky texture. So you can see that this looks fantastic. I mean, it does look really photorealistic. And what's cool about it is you can actually update the shader by just clicking on here. And you can actually, you know, adjust these parameters here, adjust the brightness of the leaves and things like that. Um, in pretty much real time, you can randomize this as well and kind of have like a parameter, like a min value for the brightness and a max value. If you really want this to be dark, you can oops, pull that down to be quite dark or you could just kind of keep it standardized and just adjust that way. You can also adjust the hue per branch, which is kind of nice too. It's kind of cool to be able to have that customizability. It just makes it look a little bit more photorealistic at times if you kind of have that little bit of uh, adjustment here. You can also adjust here so that this was, you know, more of a summer plant or, I mean, I'm not sure what a winter palm would necessarily look like because I don't really experience winter, but, you know, you can adjust that there too, which is really nice to have that kind of flexibility to adjust. So just quite a few different settings uh, to adjust. And this, again, applies for every single one of their assets here. So any one of these palms, any one of the trees that you can bring in, you can really do a lot of different customizability and the animations work really, really well. So let me actually bring in one of these uh, trees here just because uh, these look pretty cool and they also have quite a few more parameters that you can adjust for the individual leaves as you saw in that one example animation I initially brought in. So if I go over here and then hit add animation, I'm actually going to go wind tree here. And now actually if I scroll down you can see there's a lot of different bending modifiers that I can actually adjust here. So if I was to adjust these like bend global you can kind of see it's like as if like a really strong wind is starting to kind of push on this tree. Yeah, You can actually like turn this on and off if you don't want that bending there. Uh, you can adjust the branches. <laughs> Again, stuff starts to kind of break down if you go a little bit too extreme, but you know, just kind of play it in real time. You can see my frame rate's not really suffering too much, but if this was really slowing down a lot, so you've got like a ton of plants in your scene and it's really starting to struggle, uh, you can actually go to uh, up here and then just hit mute, unmute animation, and you can just mute it. So it just freezes it in place. So it's not gonna be uh, bogging down your viewport if you're trying to play stuff back in real time. And then you can just unmute it again. And now it's going again. So super fun, really quick and easy to kind of make those adjustments there. And again, you can adjust all the shaders and stuff as you see fit. And the last thing I really like about this too is if I was to add in a plane here, let me just scale this up so you can actually see it in our viewport here. Let's just add a couple cuts to it so we actually have a little bit of geometry to play with. And what you can do is with this plane selected, I can scroll all the way down here and you actually have a scatter functionality. You can scatter objects that you have from other things that you've made in the scene. But they also do have a really cool library of assets in here that you can import as well. You've got a bunch of different flowers and they actually kind of have these preset with uh, different scatter patterns. So you can see like for the lavender field, they've got these kind of like nicely neat uh, rows like you'd see in real life. Same deal for like the sunflowers, they've got these kind of nicely adjusted. So they've got those, they've got like forest floor scatter things. So like roots and kind of rocks and things like that. Uh, they've got just grass patterns too. So I found myself using like this European meadow A and B quite a bit, which look pretty nice. Uh, lily pads even too. So I haven't found myself using these as much, um, but these ones you can also scatter on like a water plane if you have that too. I tend to like to place those by hand because I feel like I like a little bit more control over those. Um, they also have miscellaneous ones too. So like a little desert biome, some fallen leaves and things like that. Rocks, kind of large and small rocks for coastal rocks, which look nice. Uh, some vines that you can kind of scatter too. And then also some weeds too. So quite a few different ones to play around with. I definitely encourage you to kind of uh, experiment with those quite a bit. Like I said, I found myself using the flowers ones, I think the most. So we'll just go with this flower bed rustic. And what's cool is when you import these in, you can actually have like a little base material that they've made. It's kind of hard to see in this preview, but there's kind of this like muddy ground material that they can automatically apply below. So if you didn't want to go out searching for another material that can come prepackaged with it. If you don't want that, you can always just turn that off too. Um, but you know, I'll just import that in here. It'll take a second to load up. There's quite a few flowers because I made this plane quite large, but you can always adjust uh, the scaling of these things too. If I was to go down to the scatter parameters, you see it's importing quite a few of these. So let me just really turn this down so it's not bogging down my viewport too much. And then you can also adjust uh, quite a few different things here too. So like the particle density per meter squared. So I can maybe turn this down even more so it's you know a lot smaller and then hit recalculate density. And so it you know kind of recalculates where these things are placed in the scene. If I want to turn down max particles a bit, just for the sake of this video, I'll turn that down. And so you can see this is really, you know, added in quite a few different things here, which is really nice. So I definitely encourage you to play around this a bit. And then you can also add in different paint layers here too, to mask out where you want things. So if I was to add in a paint layer here, I can then, you know, paint in where I want these flowers to display. And let me for now turn off the grass so it's not bogging down as much. So I can paint around here and just kind of show where those flowers I want to be. 
Let me just click off white paint mode here for a second. And then we can also just scale these up a little bit so we see them a bit better. So you can see I've, I've painted in those quite nicely. You can mess around a bit more with the density here if you want. You can even paint in a layer for length of these two, which I found nice. And what's also really great is for each of the flowers, so there's a couple different flower types included in here, you can actually change uh, the ratio of how many of these are for each other too. So if you wanted more of this violet, you can turn those up. So there's more of the violets being featured. If you didn't want as many, that's fine. You can turn it down. Same deal for the corn flower, you can turn them up and you can just see it adjust as in real time. And it also shows you a little preview of what that flower is here too, which is just kind of helpful if you don't know what the, you know, the, the different names are for each of them. So this is really cool. And you can also adjust the individual scaling for each of these as well. So you just have a lot of different control over all these parameters, which I found really fantastic. And then once again, if you click on this, you can also add an animation for them as well. So I'm gonna click on the wind low vegetation. And my cat is yelling in the background. He wants some attention. He's mad that I'm making a tutorial. Um, so I can just add in that animation. You can see it's quite subtle here if I zoom in, but you've got this nice kind of gentle breeze pattern to the leaves here. And if I just wanted to turn that up a bit more, we can, if we wanted to kind of have it look a little bit stronger wind, it starts to again, break down a little bit at a certain speed, but it looks pretty good. So this is a lot of fun to kind of play around with here. And it really just adds so much more life to your animations. And like I said, I've been using this quite a bit now for a lot of my uh, later animations here that I've been putting together. And for now also, they have a sale going on until the 13th of February, where you get, I think it's 33% off their uh, add-on, which is a really good deal. And they were constantly updating this. Like I said, they just released this new update recently here. So once you actually own the software, the add-on, uh, you are subscribed to any future updates. So it's really nice to have because like they're constantly adding new assets. They have a Discord channel where you can ask for any help uh, that you need. And people are very responsive there to kind of give you feedback on things. Uh, so it's just really helpful. And they also do have a couple of other add-ons uh, available too that I use. One is this water one that's really fantastic for adding some cool water effects to your scene. Another one is a traffic one. It's got like different cars and trucks and things like that. So definitely uh, check out their other add-ons as well. I've linked all of those in the description for you to peruse at your leisure. Uh, but thank you so much for tuning in. And again, I'm gonna kind of make this a bit of a series. I'm gonna talk about a lot of the different add-ons I use and how they kind of work uh, for my different scenes. So, you know, stay tuned, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much.